want to present to you some Photoshop basics that I use in my weekly tutorials and sometimes I might not explain them too well. So this one is for beginners but intermediate photoshoppers can find out some things too. If you want to open a photo, click on open, but if you want to create a new document, click on new. Here you will find a lot of options for photo, for print, for art and illustration. Choose one. Personally, I usually like to see the dimension in pixels. I will not go into depth with all the information over here because it's not that important. So just choose one and click on create. If you want to see all open files, go to Windows, Arrange, Float All in Window. You can move them anywhere you want. Ok, so with the first tool, the Move tool, you can move your photo over another file. Just like this, you drag it over the new layer. With the Rectangular Marquee tool, you can select any part of your photo and with Move tool, you can move just that part. Rectangular Marquee tool can help you make a rectangle shape, but first you need to make a new layer. Now, with Paint Bucket tool, you fill it. Now, delete this step with Ctrl plus Z. To use Elliptical Marquee tool, you first need to deselect the current select, click right, choose deselect. Now let me show you another thing you can do with Rectangular and Elliptical Marquee tool. Click right and choose select inverse. You can for example draw with brush tool around your original selection. I choose a simple brush to fill it faster. Now you can select again select inverse to go again to your original selection. Now just deselect it and delete a layer to go to the next tool. With polygon lasso you can select anything you want but the selection will be made of straight lines so you might not consider this the best way to select. After that you can move it anywhere you want. To deselect, click on elliptical market tool and click right deselect. You might consider magneting lasso tool better because it goes around the shape of your object. If your background is simple this tool will work really well for you. I can say the same thing about quick selection. You need to have patience for this tool. To see details, choose zoom tool and zoom in. You can select outside the shape of the body because you can unselect parts with quick selection with minus. See, the selection is better now. Now deselect. Next tool is crop tool. With this one you crop your photo. Obvious, right? You select the part you want to crop and press enter on your keyboard. Eyedropper tool helps you select a specific color from your photo. Another useful tool is the brush tool.
I would recommend to make a new layer because in this way what you draw with brush tool is separated from the photo and you can delete it anytime. If you want to make a light just use the soft round brush bin white and press anywhere you want. Make the opacity lower and move it anywhere you want. With erase tool you can erase what you drew with brush tool or you can erase parts of your photo. I choose to erase the background. If you want it to have a transparent background to be a PNG leave it like this. But to see better the results let's choose a color for background. I make a new layer and drag it under the photo in the layers section. With paint bucket tool I fill it with yellow. Now you can see clear what I'm erasing. Now I present you paint bucket tool that I already used it a few times. You can fill parts of your photo with certain colors. If you don't make a new layer and just press somewhere on your photo it's gonna be pretty random the part that's filled with color. So make a new layer and fill it with your color. Next, the sharpen tool. Its name says what it's doing. You can make its size bigger or smaller. And even change its strength. Now the blur tool. Again, it's pretty obvious what it's doing. And the smudge tool, this one simulates the effect you see when you drag a finger through wet paint. In your designs you might need some shapes. You can do them with ellipse tool, rectangle tool, polygon tool, custom shape tool. With ellipse tool you can make circles. For fill you can choose a color or none. It's the same for stroke. Another tool for shapes is polygon tool. You can choose the number of sides and in this way you change the shape of your form. If you want some special shapes, click on custom shape tool. A cute one is the heart one. I also like the dog bow. You can fill them with color. Also a useful tool is the zoom tool. You can zoom in and out. Or click right and choose fit to screen. Now let me show you the settings for text. You can choose its size. It can be bigger than 72. You just have to write it by yourself. Go to Window Character. This window will appear. You want the space between the first and second line to be bigger, write here a bigger number and if you want it to be smaller, write a smaller number. This is called leading. If you want the space between the letters to be bigger or smaller, you have to change the numbers here. This is called tracking. These are four styles. 
bold, italic or caps. Now let's go to blending options. Check drop shadow. You can change the shadow size, spread, distance, the blend mode, the opacity, the color. Play around to figure it out all. Another useful blending option is color overlay. This is a way you can change the color of your text. Another one is stroke. Here I usually change the size, the color and the position. I usually use inside. A nice way is also gradient overlay. Click on gradient and here you choose the colors you want. You might like pattern overlay as well. Merge Down combines the layer below the currently selected layer and the selected layer together into one singular layer. Merge Visible will merge all visible layers into one singular layer. You can make the opacity lower for your layers. Also, there are a lot of blend modes. Working with blend modes, it's almost always an experimental process because it's nearly impossible to predict the results, so you just have to play around. These small icons are helpful too. You can create a new layer, create a new group, you can add your layers inside a group. If you have a big project, these groups are really helpful to make your project more organized. This icon helps you create new adjustment layers. I will show you a few more useful things in Photoshop that you will use often. For example, adjustments from image. Personally, I often use brightness contrast, hue saturation, black and white, inverse, shadows, highlights, desaturate. I will show you what everything does broadly. Brightness contrast. There's no need for many explanations. Your name says it all.
You can make the same adjustments going to layer, new adjustments layer. And these adjustments don't apply directly on your layer and you can hide them anytime and hide them. I will keep showing you what some adjustments do from image. If this tutorial helped you, check my channel for more tutorials. I believe the best way to learn a software is by doing small projects like the ones I teach you on my channel. So if you want to learn Photoshop, this is the right place to be. I will help you make your ideas come to life. Have a nice day.